Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ingeborg. This is Channel's. Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> the channel's name is a Stitch Too Far. My name is Ingeborg. Welcome. Um, it's Sunday, July 8th, and I'm here to talk about my stitching. And there's quite a bit to show, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, and I have a list of things that I want to talk about and I didn't put them in order so I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to talk about first. <sighs> Let's see. Let's just do the stitching first and then do all the other stuff after that. So, um, last two weeks I have been working on some of my whips and I have been still trying out my new ideas for rotation in which I work on uh, one of my bigger whips during the weekdays and uh, on, during the weekends I work on some smaller things so that I still get finishes but I still get also a decent amount of progress on my big whips and I must say I'm enjoying that uh, I do notice that on Thursday or Friday especially Friday I'm getting to a point where I need to be careful that I'm not getting burnt out by the project that I'm working on so in those cases I generally just stop and uh, work on something else and I also have been setting goals for myself on the bigger whips to, to achieve and I need to work on my goals because <laughs> I'm setting the bar too low because every time I reach my goal within the first two days or something so <laughs> I might have to be a bit more ambitious about my goals. But yeah, so uh, the past two weeks I have been working on two big whips and two smalls. I finished one of my smalls. So I'll show you that first. Uh, and on this horrible used copy. <laughs> so this is uh, a pattern I bought before I went to the New Jersey retreat to start the New York as a kind of a souvenir. And I did that and I finished it up last weekend and I did prepare so well so making sure I'm showing you the front God. did it again so yeah I finished it it's done And it's stitched on a 28 count Jobelin uh, even weave by, I think it's Richard in Summer Sky, which is a very light blue mottling of sky. And I thought that was perfect for this. I love it. I'm not including the, the swirly bits because I mainly did it for the Statue of Liberty. You could do it as a 4th of July piece, I guess. And I'm going to try and finish this suit. <coughs> Excuse me, I have something in my throat. I don't know what it is, but today I woke up and my throat was sore and I had a slight headache. So yeah, nope, not getting sick. <coughs> But uh, yeah, really pleased. I'm thinking about ways of finishing this in with, with some other things like pictures included in into the framing or the finish. I'm not sure yet. I might have to put on my Priscilla and Chelsea goggles and go shopping. Um, so that's the finish. I will put all the information about anything I'm showing you project wise in the description box I always do that with uh, information about what fabric, what flosses, what the pattern designer is etc. So have a look down there if you need more information. Uh, what else did I do? Oh yeah, so I worked on two bigger projects. I picked up my um, Chatelaine piece and did quite a lot on that. I was really surprised um, how fast it was going. I'm trying to find a picture. 
I'm working on the and this are uh, the small so I'm working on the Rajasthan Lotus Pond and basically I uh, I did all this I did all the the little uh, over one uh, lotus motifs and this other elephant so let me show you Here's the full picture and I'm showing you the front. <laughs> That's going to be a thing now, isn't it? So yeah, uh, last time you saw this, I had done the borders and uh, the elephant. And uh, what I did this time is I took down some of the borders that were not filled out and I, I filled in a bit more. I added some backstitching with metallic on the outside of this border and I have to do the inside. And I, my goal was to uh, try and finish this. And I managed to do that. Or was it this one? I'm not sure yet. Um, probably this one because it's in reverse image for me. So I finished this one and I also did these. And these are over one. And you can't tell looking at it, but there were like 15 colors in the over one. Just this little thing. Which was a bit annoying, <laughs> but I also love how they look. Um, yeah, gives a bit of texture to the whole piece and yeah. So not sure when I'm going to bring this back. I have some backstitching to do still on this whole bit, for especially the elephants. And I might start the structure that's in the middle i'm not sure but yeah that's going to be something i decide for next time love this i love working with it i'm working with the recommended flosses what i don't particularly love is the pattern uh, how it's graphed um yeah let's do that later I have issues with sometimes uh, this, the use of very, very similar uh, symbols in the same, like in the, the lily pad design, the over one bit. They, uh, there's two types of hashtag that are used and one is for a pink and one is for a green. And I really didn't see that first time. I only noticed it when I was stitching further on. And I, I accidentally grabbed the right color for the first bit that I stitched. So I'm lucky that I didn't have to rip out that over one. But yeah, that was a bit annoying and that makes me more uh, uh, alert and more attentive about the whole thing. And I'm actually using, <laughs> I've been using two screens for the stitching of the elephant because, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Uh, it's hard to see here, but actually this elephant, uh, uh, yeah, this this one that I stitched uh, last uh, is graphed, is charted in pinks. And I figured that was optional because I like symmetry. <laughs> so it would have driven, driven me nuts, nuts if this one was pink and this was, was blue. So I made this one blue, so I did a bit of converting and then I found out that this is not an exact match to this one. So it's not like it's just been mirrored. It's actually different, differently uh, designed. So that took a bit of fudging, but yeah, now they are both blue and I'm happy with that. But yeah, that meant that I was working with two screens because I needed to check the original and have the other the one I'm crossing off, handy. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I'm not expecting anything that bad for the for the for the rest of the piece, but yeah, just a warning if you're planning on doing that. Yeah, you might have to use a bit of imagination. Um, so that's one big whip. And then this week I picked up tapestry by Ink Circles again. 
If you want to join us, there's a lot of people stitching this at the moment and we are sharing our progress on Instagram. I'm not sure if you are sharing it on a Facebook group somewhere too, but the hashtag for that is I see tapestry. I will put it somewhere here probably. So if you post your progress, please use that hashtag so we can all enjoy. And whoop. I again had a lot more progress than I was anticipating because uh, I was planning. Let's see if I can find the pattern picture for you. So I was uh, last time you saw it, I was about halfway, only I didn't fill in the center bit. So my main goal was to fill in the center and maybe work out the flowers that are going off of the center if I got around to it and I managed to do both so yay so this means I'm definitely halfway done and I will show you where I'm at and I had to scroll up the scroll bars a bit so here is the, the top of the piece and I added this whole center and these three flowers I love these colors. I just love them. I use uh, all the recommended threads on this. So the Gentle Arts colorway. I've seen people use the uh, DMC conversion, which looks just great as well. So, um, And I have noticed that mainly um, some of the colors in the birds uh, are very different uh, between dye lots, so that's uh, if that's a concern for you, I would check out the DMC conversion, especially for the birds. But yeah, I love this, and I might pick this up more regularly in the next month, just to try and get the finish, because basically somewhere here is the bottom of the design. So yeah, it's manageable now. Next time I think I will add the bird symbols on these two sides and then work from there. Love it! Okay, coffee. And then I started something and I don't have, I, I will have to try and find a picture of that. I mentioned a while ago that I got some Biscornu patterns and I really want to work uh, on those uh, a bit more because I really enjoyed working on the ones I made um, in when was it April I think so yeah I want to do a, a few more and I started one and this one is turning out to be quite a bit of work <laughs> and not sure if it's showing up what i'm worried about this is going to be like a delft blue flowery chintzy flowery pattern on front and back and when i was working on this this week or when i started it last weekend i think i was wondering if it's going to show up well on a biscorni i'm going to have to find out because it's turning out to be a lot more work than uh, i imagined <laughs> i thought i might just turn this out in a weekend but nope so yeah this is going to be the front i only have to finish a big flower over here and then the back is going to be a big flower that is more centered yeah love it not sure if it's going to work as a biscorni we'll just have to see what do you think? Will it work? Uh, so yeah, I will link her down below. Her shop is a, she has an online shop, which I think is only in Dutch, but it's, it's doable to just scroll through. And she has a contact site where you can contact her about ordering uh, from abroad. Uh, she's happy to ship anywhere, so she just needs to let you know the cost of that. 
But yeah, very reasonably priced and lovely, lovely variation of patterns. Lots of bis corners, lots of smalls. Uh, that's that. Am I going to put that near the coffee? Yes, I am. Because I'm a rebel. Uh, okay. Sorry, I'm clicking my pen. Yeah. I'm going to talk about last weekend because last weekend a few that are close to the shop, the LNS, were able to get together for a small reunion of our retreat in March. So I think most of the Dutch attendees were there and we had Dunja from Germany who was always there, also there. Uh, if you go to Darling Bluebell on YouTube, you'll find uh, a short update where she talks about that, that get together. And also she has some pictures. There's also lots on Instagram. I don't think I'm going to add them in because I'm trying to keep down the size of the video. But yeah, check out Instagram and check out Darling Bluebell if you want to see some pictures. But we had a lovely time. It was like going back in time. It was just like March and uh, yeah, but then we missed a few people, unfortunately. But yeah, we had laughs and we had shopped a bit. And I got a present from Evelyn and uh, I was a bit confused by that, but she explained to me why. And I just want to say thank you again. And I want to share with you what she made me because she had a beautiful card of a stitched Will William of Orange. Willem van Oranje was our first. Um, well, basically, he was the guy that uh, managed to separate the Netherlands from the reign of Spain. So he is a very important guy in our history. And this is actually a stitched portrait of him. I guess that's my random Dutch fact. <laughs> and she made me this. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Love it. Oh, let's put it the right way down. Yeah, I love it. Thank you very much, Evelyn. And I told you before, you didn't have to, but I really, really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, while we were there, I already knew this, but uh, there was some big news from our shop owner because they're moving. The shop is moving. Uh, for me, that uh, means that I'm going to have to travel uh, longer, but only half an hour longer. So they are moving and that means that if you are in the neighborhood and you're planning on visiting them, be aware that they might be closed uh, or, or have left uh, the current location. I am going to hold this up. It is in Dutch, but it's probably mainly for Dutch speaking people anyway who are planning a visit. So I'm just going to hold this up so that you can read the information where they are moving to. They're moving to Deventer, which is a city more to the northeast of where they're currently at. And uh, which is uh, what I'm t I've been told is uh, more popular. It's a better location for them. And uh, they hope that they will attract a bigger crowd there. So yeah, I hope this is re uh, you could read that. If not, just send me a message on my email. My email I will put up in the screen so that if you need to contact me, you can reach me there. But yeah, so uh, they are, I think they're closing the shop. The 4th of August is the last day they are open in their current location. And the 20th of August they open again in their new location. Um, so, besides uh, a little bit of stitching that we did at the shop and a lot of shopping and a lot of talking, 
uh, that's all I have to share but I'm gonna show you what I bought because oh, of course I did buy some things I saw that Judy had found these and I hadn't, hadn't ever seen these so I am I picked some of them up uh, and they are big greeting cards with an aperture uh, I'm trying to see the company I will add uh, the the web link to their company Acu Acu Factum. It's a German company, A C U F A C T U M. And I got that Christmassy one, and I got this one just because I loved it. So I will add those the link to those in the description. And I got some patterns. I didn't get any. Losses, I think I wasn't kitting up anything but yeah I saw this and I had to think of Amanda lazy stitcher and I asked her if she liked it and she said yes so I'm gonna send that over to you um, I got for myself I got this one which is a Dutch designer it's a pattern from 2007 but I just love it I think it's the colors that attracted me to it at first. Uh, I don't think she has a website, so yeah, not sure. But you maybe you can find it. I will put her name somewhere here, so maybe you can Google for her if you're interested. This is another Dutch designer. I think they still have a website. I will add. Uh, a link if I can find one. Love that box. Yep. And last one I got was this one. I've been looking for that while it was on my wish list. And then it was in her box of patterns, so I just had to pick it up. It's a uh, Sony Creek. Uh, sorry, cross my heart. Why did I think it was Sony Creek? But yeah really like those and that's all I got I think I still had to pay off some of my silks <laughs> so yeah um, let's see I'm gonna have to do this because otherwise I can't keep track yeah so, while I was there, I had to give them prior warning because I was going to be the sexiest woman alive. Because I saw so many people post about this on Instagram. I figured for that price, I was going to have a look and see if I could find this. Uh, the official brand is Yocto Sun. I will link them below the Amazon link. I think I couldn't get that because they didn't ship to the Netherlands. I'm not sure. But I got the Asian knockoff for a few dollars less. And in total, I think the shipping was... I think the total sh shipping cost plus this was about $25. So that's about 22, 20 euros. And yeah, I had to try them and I must say... I think I'm going to do a little bit of a review here because I do like them, but there are some buts. So I have I wear glasses and and I tried working without them, but because I have a lazy eye and I have all kinds of weirdness, I need them anyway. So I'm I just wear them over my own glasses. Um, you can move all the parts in the way so that they you can have the the point of view or the focus point suitable for your eyes i guess there is a light uh, switch on top of here that lights an led and the uh, batteries for it go in here i find that if i use uh, the batteries it really really becomes a bit heavy and maybe maybe because i'm wearing it over my own glasses and it's more on the tip of my nose it starts sliding off 
So I would prefer to have the batteries out and I would also prefer to use this only when I'm traveling because it's easy to bring. It comes with a whole set of five different strengths of glasses from one times to three and a half times. And what you do is you take it and you just clip it on like that. That's it. Are you ready? I thought that was really convenient and then you can adjust it so that it, it works for you. I have found out besides the, the heaviness with the batteries that um, the focal point for the really strong magnification is really close to your face. So if you really need really, really, really strong magnification, it still works. But I will show you how close I, I have to hold it to see what's written on the instructions. So these are the instructions. This is how close I have to hold it to see sharply. So if you're stitching, it will work, but it's not the most convenient. So if you really need really, really, really strong magnification, I'm not sure this is the most ideal, but then anything you would use would have to be very close to the stitching. But I found, I thought for the money, sorry about the, that was really loud, I think, sorry. But I think for the money you have to pay for it, it is the perfect thing to bring along with you. Um, I have tried the other one, the green one with the headband, that somehow for me that is really the wrong distance to my eyes. I just can't, I can't see with them. Uh, but these I can use, so, and I thought if, 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 if I couldn't use them, I would be able to, to give them away or something for that price. Um, so yeah, I'll link both below. Uh, have a look and see uh, what you want to use them for. I would re definitely recommend them for travel. I don't think I would use them at home a lot because I have my own magnification lamp and that works perfectly for me. Um, and I do, uh, there is also a head strap that you can, you can take off these, uh, what do you call them, wings? I don't know. I mean, you could put on a strap so that it's more tied to your face. But yeah, I found that with the glasses, I, I really prefer having this set up with no strap because otherwise it would push too hard on my glasses. Um, yeah, but yeah, definitely have a look and see if it's what you're looking for. Go for it and be sexy like us. <laughs> anyway. Uh, That was that. So back to some more stitching. Because yesterday I planned to finish a whole lot of things and I did, but not everything I was planning on because I was supposed to get a delivery of a frame and it, it just didn't show up. And then it's rescheduled again for today. Hooray. But yeah, so I didn't do that and I didn't, I still, I'm still debating about uh, save the stitches, how I'm going to finish that. So I, I didn't, didn't get to that. Let's put it like that. But I did finish quite a lot of things. So let's start with the uh, smaller pieces that I had laying around. I showed you last time that I finished this scissor fob. And this is my final finish. I'm happy with it. Uh, I didn't like the tassel. I'm not going to use it as a scissor fall because I think it's a bit big for that. So I'm just going to use it and hang it somewhere close to my stitchy spot in case I need to frog or I'm getting frustrated with a pattern. I can flip it the way around. That is my mood. But yeah, just just finish it off with the instructions and added my own little hanger and some cording, silver cording. Yep, yeah, pleased with that. And Otte, I warned you, but 
I will be happy to send it to you. I'm not sure if you already gave me your address, but PM me on Instagram or send me an email with your address and this will be coming your way. Then I did an experiment last Christmas with some new pearl hand-dyed uh, threads that my LNS had. And it was a design for modern folk embroidery. I think it's one of his freebies that he sent out last year around Christmas. And I thought I might as well turn it into a pillow. And this is my end result. I had this bow and bell from something else that I kept and stitched it onto the pillow and it's just a simple backing. But yeah, I'm really pleased with it. The bottom is sewed together. Did a, it's a bit puckered, but yeah, who cares? Love it. <coughs> so that's not a small. Then I finished the retreat piece. And I'm still a bit annoyed <laughs> because for some reason I I measured wrong or I didn't cut off one part that I was supposed to cut off. But it's a bit wonky and I managed to get the wonky part on the top. But yeah, I had this box that I picked up at a thrift store that I was planning on making small things like cushions or something or biscornus to put in there. But it was the exact perfect fit for this, so I just I just glued this onto uh, some foam, foam, not foam cord, uh, like uh, cardstock, and I put some felt on it, and then I, I stretched it over and glued it, and I just glued it onto the back, and I figured I can always display it like this. Oh, it would stand up. I hope so, yeah. So I can display it like this. And when I make smalls, like Christmas smalls or something, I could temporarily display it like this. Fine. But the annoying thing is that, can you see? <laughs> this is sticking out. Oh gosh, oh well. But yeah, really pleased with it for the most part. It'll do. Um, <clears throat> then I had two larger pieces were, that were laying around for quite a while. And I thought I would have a look and see if I had a frame for them, but I didn't have one that was fitting. So I just st stretched this one over one of those ready-made canvases that you can buy, like these. I don't know if you can see. But yeah. So, and this is my tree of stitches, and I thought it would be fun to have a bit more sky on the top, so I didn't center it, I just centered it on the bottom. And I, what I did is I didn't glue it on the front, but I only glued it on the wood side over here, so this is all glued down. But if I want to, I can just cut it uh, free, and I still have a piece that I could stitch onto a project bag or something. But yeah, this is the summer sky fabric again. It's really great. And yeah, love it. And then the final thing that I managed to fully finish. Well, I'm not convinced it's fully finished yet. But this is my Coffee Saves Lives piece. We have those the, these canvases also in flat form. And that one I had was a perfect fit. So I did this. I just stretched it on. And I am, I, I still have it, I didn't glue it because I'm not sure. I might have a hunt for a frame for this. But for now it will just be stretched onto this piece and I can, at least I can display it. But I might look for a frame for this or otherwise I might uh, get some more cardstock and make a bigger size and, and line it with paper or fabric and glue this on. Yeah, happy. Uh, so I'm going through most of my stuffs. Yep. Um, One more thing I want to share. 
well, two more things because apparently my month of indulgence for my birthday is spreading or spreading into June, so I was still buying a lot. I hope that's going to stop now. <laughs> I'm planning that it will stop now. But yeah, um, I was uh, watching Linda Joe's uh, Pretty Southern's video about. Um, oh, hang on. That's weird. Well, leave it at that. Uh, I was watching her video about. Oh, hang on. We can do this, right? Yeah, better. About her trip to keepsakes in Cincinnati, where StitchCon was being held the week after she went. And she did a really good uh, walkthrough of the store, uh, sh uh, showing all the models. And there was one model on the wall that I actually had to pause the video and take a screenshot and email the shop <laughs> and ask them about that pattern. Now, I did realize it was the week before StitchCon, so I told them, take your time, no hurries. But then StitchCon happened and I, I, I saw uh, people doing more videos about walkthroughs of the shop and that thing, I kept seeing that stupid sampler <laughs> and I wanted it. So I contacted Diana, it is Kismet, because I knew she was there. And I said, Diana, have you seen this? Could you ask if they still have that pattern or if, if they know the designer name or something that I can Google for it? And she was so kind that she actually got it for me. And I was all set to pay for it. But then she said, she asked me if she could gift it to me. And that was really, really sweet of her. And I said, yes, and I'm going to have to find a way to thank her properly. Um, but yeah, she sent it to me and I have it now. I'm glad I have it now because I have seen it on a on someone's floss tube sometime and I remember looking for it and couldn't find it and it's an out of print uh, pattern uh, so if you are looking for it you might want to contact keepsakes and see if they have any more copies but yeah I got it and I'm really happy so yesterday in the mail I was waiting for the arrival of the frame that they were going to deliver so when finally at the end of the afternoon, the doorbell rang. I was like, yeah, that's my frame. And I gladly accepted the package and I was like, oh, that's a bit too squishy for a frame. And I'm, then I remember that it might, uh, that I saw on the tracking that Diana's uh, package might arrive today as well. So I thought, oh, that's the chart. And then I thought, oh, it's a, it's a bit too squishy for, for just a chart. And of course she added, Lots of goodies, but here, this is the pattern I was trying to talk about. Um, uh, so this is by Wild Heart Designs. There is a internet address on here, but I think I tried to look for it and it wasn't there anymore. So they're out of business, I think. Uh, let me know if you know otherwise, but this is the design. So this is called Dancer Ancest Ancestral. I don't know how to say it. Dance of the Ancestors. And it's basically, it's like a spot motif. And there are some alphabets in there. Might have to stitch those. <laughs> it's giant, by the way. It's like 500 something stitches by, what is it? Oh. Uh, 593 stitches <laughs> by 243 stitches. So we can knock that out in a week, right? Yeah. Um, I love the way she she charted this because 
um, what she did is she made one overview chart and for each motif she has a separate design chart and in the overview chart she just has the numbers of those specific designs so, so that you know the placement. I think that's really neat. And there was a surprise in the back. A stitch marker. I think it's called a stitch marker, right? Where you count off the, uh, the starting point. So if you're not familiar with this, this is supposed to be three inches wide and there's marks on this zero, one, two, three. So uh, if you want to, st if you're a, star a corner starter, you can use this to put this, uh, for instance, on the top left corner of your fabric. And then, you know, if you start here, you are three uh, inches out this way and three inches out that way from, so you have a three inch mar margin on the top and on the left. And then you know, or you can uh, put the two uh, inch marker somewhere and then you have two inches. So that's basically a way to find your starting point more easily. And it's, it's right in here, it's really nice. So, but it's like, I don't know, 50 pages of <laughs> pattern. <laughs> it's small and I love it and I'm so happy to have it and I'm probably, you can't hear me, but yeah, thank you so much Diana for helping me out with this and thank you also for to Keepsakes for the shop. Um, I am totally, I totally, uh, because they were worried that I was getting impatient, I wasn't, I, well I sort of was, but I wasn't mad at them. I just thought, hey, and there's 150 people there that most of them I know, they might help me out. So yeah, really happy. And that was not all that she sent because she sent me a lovely card with some lovely words in it that I will keep to myself. And Diana added some fabric in here, which I love. I'm gonna have to find a way to use this in a bag or a finish. And she sent me lots and lots and lots of fun uh, not necessarily all flosses but all kinds of fibers I guess is the right word to try out for needlepoint or hardanger so there were some DMC's as well but there are also these like gauze ribbons I think they are from the Karen collection, they are called Rachel. And I have a yellow one as well. And some Victorian Motto sampler shop threads that I'm very happy to try out. And this is, what is this? I think this is another ribbon. Yeah, lots of goodies in here and lots of beautiful silks as well. Gonna have so much fun with those. And these, I love them all though, Diana, thanks so much. Treenway silks, they're like cord, silk cord, I love them. I will definitely have a try with those. And I think some of them I could also use for finishing. So yeah, woohoo. Thank you so much, Diana. If you uh, haven't watched any of her videos, go check out It Is Kismet. I will link her below. And I need to talk uh, about her anyway, but before I do that, I, was, I will go and share some of the things I bought. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is one I've been looking for for a while, and I, I know it's hard to find in hardcover, so... I was watching Jess and Marie this week and uh, she enabled me to get another uh, primitive hair design and I thought well I might as well get this one too because I'm there. So Jane Eyre, 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 not sure how to say it. And the other one I wanted was this one, that was the one that Jessie Marie enabled me with, which is of Salem. I have bought another piece with Salem which trial designs and I thought 
I would try and use this and that piece and another piece that I found through Instagram. It's an Etsy shop. I will link them all below. But I thought I might combine those three into my own design as a sort of souvenir of my time in Boston and Salem. Uh, I did find out though that I was looking at the names and there's one name in there that's missing. So I'm going to have to have to think about what I want to do because I also want to have the dates of their execution. And I actually, I don't want, I don't want any person to be in there. I think it's more, I don't know. I like it better without anyone standing in front of the gallows. I don't know, but I'm going to have to do some fudging and figure out how to combine three patterns with three different sizes of graphs. Because in the past I have done some rearranging of graphs of the same graph you know, patterns on the same graph so you, i could i could just cut them out and paste them the, you know with scissors and glue to match to make my own configuration and now i'm going to have to find a way to do that with three patterns with three different sizes of grids so if you have any suggestions of how i could do that without because i i have been Friday night I was I was trying to figure it out and I couldn't because I just I just couldn't. <laughs> so if you have any suggestions on what I could do to combine those three in a way that I know the placement is, is going to work and this, the size is going to work, let me know, please. Uh, so yeah. Other facts, uh, sorry, facts, other things I wanted to mention is, uh, is related to Diana because she started Floss to Fit Club. I think it's a, a Facebook page as well, I'm not sure. But basically, she had a video a while back about, you know, there's things that uh, we tend to do the for others that we don't do for ourselves and it's time to also take care of ourselves a bit better and I was inspired by that and I did start uh, exercising more back then but I managed to not to stop doing that and I figured um, after my trip to the United States and all the walking that I did especially in New York and Boston that um, I I wanted to try and keep that up, keep moving, because I work from home a lot of the times. I, I have noticed a significant change in my uh, fitness ever since I started working from home, because I just don't move anymore. I basically go up and down my stairs at home. That's about all the exercise I get. Um, an occasional walk to the shops, but that's about it. So I thought I'm going to try and keep moving every day more than I was doing. That's my, my, my low goal. And so far I, I have been managing to get on my cross trainer or go for a walk of, our, of a few miles or uh, walk or bicycle to, um, to places. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. And I already thanked uh, Diana for inspiring me to get moving again. And I want to say thank you to those who have uh, uh, commented on my Instagram posts about that and shared how they are trying to get moving again. And that's wonderful. And <laughs> I also wanted to say that ever since that uh, post on Instagram, I have been getting really weird sweaty pictures from Emma. <laughs> we have gotten into this habit of sending each other pictures when we're exercising. <laughs> so don't stop, but just, I just think it's hilarious that, that you know, you get a picture of a sweaty person <laughs> looking that, like they're about to die. But yeah, um, thanks. Thank you everyone who is supporting me with this. And I hope that, uh, 
more of you find out about the fit, Floss to Fit Club and find a way that it might impact your life. Um, yeah. And then um, that's about it. That's what I had on my list. There's one thing I wanted to ask you about for those of you who have experience with canvas work or needlepoints. Because I have some pieces that I have managed to kit up. Um, and I was wondering, when I bought them, I was figuring, you know, they are a bit bigger than what I've, I've currently been working on. The pieces that uh, Arlene has designed are on a canvas of 9 by 9 inches. And, they, and she offers a way of... Uh, adding on some fabric so that you can use them in your Q-snap. And I was planning to do that for these designs as well. Although they are bigger, I was thinking I would just sew on the side of the canvas some um, fabric so that I could either put them in a scroll bar, scroll frame, or in a Q-snap. Because I have uh, the tags and the... The wooden frame but I only have them up to seven inches I think um, and I was wondering if anyone has any experience with doing it that way and if it's if you would recommend it or if you would recommend using the the regular wooden stretcher bars with the tacks let me know if you have any suggestions I think that's about it uh, the one, the the one last thing I wanted to mention that I originally had as my Dutch fact, but I guess the William of Orange was another Dutch fact. Uh, but um, I, oh yeah, Lisa, who uh, is from Washington and was at our retreat, uh, she mentioned in our WhatsApp group that uh, there was this uh, uh, exhibit in the Netherlands, really interesting. Um, that uh, she thought she would mention and I am definitely going to try going I think Linda also mentioned she wanted to go so I need to get in touch with Linda and see if we can go together but I thought I would I, I would browse and see if I, there were other exhibits that I wasn't aware of and I found a few um, that I'm going to try and visit uh, somewhere this summer I think would be fun and there's one in Cambridge that I wanted to mention and I will link all of the information below but I just thought I would mention that there is a exhibit of samplers in Cambridge that sounds really interesting I think it's over 100 samplers from the 17th century till present I think but I will put the information below and I am having a look and see if I could go there cheaply for a weekend or something because there is a smaller airport in my area that flies to Stansted and Stansted is pretty close to Cambridge and they have all really cheap flights yeah like 30 bucks so yeah might be fun to go there for a weekend um, but I thought I would mention it uh, just to see if there are other people who weren't aware of these exhibits and would love to go so, look in the, the description box. That's it. And it's a mess over here. <laughs> I am going to finish off. I am going to finish my coffee. I am going to try and upload this and edit it. If it's not that long, oh, it's almost an hour, so I'm not going to add any pictures or video. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you are all doing well. I know... Some of you are struggling with all kinds of issues, mentally, physically. Otherwise, I am thinking of you. And I just want to say goodbye. And I hope to see you in two weeks. Bye, guys.
So I just walked uh, about 15 minutes from my house and this is where I'm now. It's Sunday morning. It's so peaceful. 